Darcy Winslow, this is going to be fun. I'm Roberta Baskin, as you know, and I am in your seed packet of magnolias. And um, I know see, I know some things about you. I mean, I know about the Academy for Systems Change, your leadership there. I know about your work with the Carbon Underground on the Board of Directors. I know that you are an incredible sports maniac very inspiring to me, passionate about the climate crisis, but what in the world possessed you? What was the, the seed in your heart to start the Magnolias? Well, thanks, Roberta. Uh, it's always a good time being with you. And, you. you know, my, my passion around women, women leaders, women athletes goes way, way back. Uh, when I first started at Nike, I was a biomechanical researcher in their sport research lab. And when I got in there, they were doing most of their testing, you know, not just at Nike, this per permeated many fields, only on men athletes. And I thought, well, women are not small men, girls are not small boys, we're fundamentally different. And so that was the beginning of it. And then I went on to be a product developer for women's product and then got to run our global research design development division, which led to my work in sustainability, and then went on to run and uh, put together our global women's um, footwear apparel equipment business, and ultimately the Nike Foundation, being a senior advisor to them. And they are focused on adolescent girls, young women, and the abject poverty uh, they face in the world, and to find leverage points uh, to intervene to help them move into the formal economy. I really started my work in sustainability in 1995 and then in 1999 set our 2020 goals. Here we are 2020 yeah. and Nike has just made incredible progress since then. So and then 25 years later you and I meet and within five minutes we discover this connection. Go a little deeper on your vision um, when you held that magnolia idea first in your heart and and started inviting women to yes. um, help you co-create it what was your vision and 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 where is it going now well the idea really emerged during our uh, second cohort fellowship program i was in conversation with one of our amazing fellows who was the sustainability director at a multinational company and she was really struggling to find support as a woman leader in a very male dominated industry and company and country. And she said, I have no support system. And I said, well, I do. I have this incredible support network of women who have done this work. So the original idea was to create um, a network of women who were focused on sustainability and to support both their inner sustainability and their outer sustainability work. And so as I started reaching out to incredible women in my network, like yourself, Roberta, that vision has evolved to now become connectors, pollinators, voices for change, and to connect with other like-minded women around the world, you know, who are seriously concerned and active in the climate crisis, in activating and achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals, to really explore what does conscious leadership? Yes, there we go. You I are one of the my leading mug. voices. My mug. <laughs> you are one of the leading voices in that, yes. Uh, but to explore conscious leadership and the divine feminine and to integrate and really wrestle with what does deep equity uh, look say like? More, say something more about what doing the inner work means to you in order to get to the outer work as a woman. Sure. What is your inner work? What is it that sure. you do? When we talk about the inner work, it's really becoming deeply aware of how we show up as leaders, uh, becoming deeply aware of understanding how each one of us influence the systems around us. And as we know, all change starts with self. Before we can tackle these huge challenges like the climate crisis, we have to start with ourselves. 
So there's another aspect that that um, that I find in the Magnolia Group, which is um, uh, really expressed with love. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the Tina Turner song, What's Love Got to Do With It? Mm. What's love got to do with women's leadership? That is such a great question. Look around us. What's happening today, especially in the United States, we are in deep need of embodying the love for each other, even though we may be so different. Um, you know, the empathy, the compassion, the trust, the vulnerability, all of these characteristics, I think women just naturally embody them. And how we show up with that intention is just critical today. What, what's going on in your heart in terms of what you've created? Mm. Well, I have had the opportunity to be part of many groups over the years. And the Magnolia founders, of which you are one, these conversations have been incubating where we are today. With this video, it's really the launch out into the, the world uh, as an invitation for other women to join in the conversation, to share what they're doing in the world, to cross-pollinate these ideas. And, you know, the, the conversations that we have had weekly for almost two years now and are coming together before COVID hit have each been among the most powerful gatherings and conversations, deep, deep conversations, not easy conversations, but really talking about what we have to do, how and we see- COVID has been teary-eyed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing the world through another person's eyes, their experience, and, and really deeply embracing that, you know, we are, we, we must deal with the power and the privilege um, and the, the centuries of that. And so um, when you think about these, these beautiful magnolia seeds that you are pollinating into the world, at a time when it's pretty muddy out there, um, what gives you hope? The women, the young women, not just young women, but it's women who are literally taking that step forward and using their voice for change. You know, just a quick story. I had the opportunity to uh, be a sustainability leader on two climate change expeditions to the Antarctic. And the Antarctic serves as really the refrigerator for the planet. And to see it melting, to see these glaciers collapsing, uh, it, it's, it's frightening. But when I came back and shared that story with others, so many would just stop in their tracks and go, what can I do? And I think this choice is in front of all of us right now. We can look at what's happening and just accept it. Okay, there's nothing I can do about it. Or yeah. we can find a leader and line up behind them and do what you can, or storm the door and do everything in your power. And that's the choice that I think is in front of us today. And I, as hard as it is, and not knowing what the solution is, it's engaging others. And uh, there are so many women who are doing incredible things. Scientists have been saying for so long that we have the technology, but yeah. do we have the will? And I think and now for a lot of reasons, women are really stepping up, finding their voice. It is time for women to lead. It's time to elevate, accelerate, the, elevate their voices, accelerate their work and connect the dots. I can't say that enough. Connect the dots, plant seeds of thought. And that's what we're doing here today as we launch this plant series for the magnolias which is really just the beginning of what we'll be doing and inviting other voices in uh, through live sessions so this is just the first darcy why magnolia <laughs> well you know we we talked about oh women leading this and women leading that and you know there's a lot of that out there, but we looked for what are really some symbols for the love of nature and the magnolias came up. And if you think about the magnolia tree, it's one of the first trees to bloom in the spring and its fragrance and its flower 
are so beautiful, so feminine, but the flowers are so incredibly tough. And magnolias act as pollinators, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And then when you think about a moonshot, uh, we all know what a moonshot is. You know, it's something big, something audacious that you know has to happen, but you're not quite sure how you're going to get there. And then 2030 is such a critical date uh, from both the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their research, the targets are 2030. And the UN Sustainable Development Goals, almost all of them, the target is 2030 to achieve. And we have not hit these before. Climate scientists used to say 2010 to 2020 was the decade for change. Now is the decade for change. We are running out of time. So let's throw everything we've got at this. Yeah, hallelujah.